So right now, let me introduce you to uh, to you the Chief Executive Officer for Hard Rock Park, Stephen Goodwin. Here he is. Welcome. Hey, this is the first time we've done this at night. That's uh, cool. Okay, well, welcome to Hard Rock Park. Six days from now, we will be rocking and rolling. So I, you know, I live a strange life. Some days I really wonder whether I'm living in a, uh, a fantasy, just being a part of the opening of the world's first rock and roll theme park. Standing here tonight reminds us that we're very much a reality. It has been over a decade since Hard Rock Park turned freestyle music park closed forever. It had only been open for collectively seven months before it closed after two seasons. Now, with years of natural decay, rides sold off and vandals finding their way in, the park looks very different than how it did just ten years ago. Join us as we take this never-before-seen tour through some astonishing buildings Take a very sobering before and after look at this once thriving destination and discover some incredible things that you won't believe were left behind. As I typically do with these special videos, you can skip to any of these time codes on the screen for some key sections of the video. Oh my god. Holy crap. There's an entire mall still here. Wow, so there are completely intact storefronts here from when this was a mall. Whoa. Hard Rock Park was very resourceful in a way, since on their land was an existing shuttered mall. The park incorporated this shopping center into their plans, and what we have here is a very interesting mix of a theme park and an abandoned mall. This shopping center originally opened as the Wakama Factory Outlets, as a secondary portion of the main mall. By the early 2000s, however, the property began to struggle, and the mall ultimately sold their separate structure to a development company. The land the mall was sitting on was ultimately rezoned for theme park use, and this building subsequently closed in 2003. While there are very few pictures of this actual mall, more recent photos from inside the existing Wakama outlets gives a peek into what this concourse used to look like. In the darkness here, there's a mound of stuff, and I just realized that this is all theme park merchandise. This is piles of crap in here, just all being sold. These are all park maps, obviously. You see these Hard Rock Park uh, drink guitar cups, the novelty cups, and the freestyle music ones. Look at this. This entire room is filled to the brim. Literally every single box that goes all the way back there is filled with these cups. This was the divider. Everything past this wall right here was unused. And everything this forward was uh, used for the park. Oh, look at this. It's an actual ride vehicle. Oh my god. <laughs> We're now entering the middle of this enormous building, the section utilized for the theme park. According to the architectural plans, around half the square footage of the mall would be gutted and rebuilt as an arcade and dark ride. The rest was partitioned off and essentially remained untouched as an abandoned mall. 
Some of the former storefronts, however, were used for storage, administration, and as we later find out, the archives. And that ceiling goes really high above the recessed ceiling. Oh, look at that. Look at the mural with the neon lettering. So, on this side, from this entrance here, would have been the arcade. Oh, what the? Oh, there's actually stuff left. I didn't know this. There's actually uh, uh, arcade murals. Oh my god, look at that. And then in here is the dark ride. The painted walls here. And the black floor, or the black ceiling. You could tell which is guest areas and which is the former mall just by the roof. The fact that it's bare uh, without a recess or without a drop ceiling and the fact that it's painted black. Yeah, so this was like the entrance to, uh, to the ride maybe? Two double doors here? Wow. Look at this back of, uh, back of house area. Backstage behind the ride, which was behind this wall here. Oh, I bet this was like a break area right here. Yeah, I bet this was like for employees, a, a little break area in here. Uh, it's basketball hoop for the employees. And I'm sure this was uh, deep storage for the ride itself. Okay, there actually is, oh, the attraction's still here, at least a portion of it. This is, this is a whole show scene. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh, listen to the echo in here. Oh, okay, so yeah, you can see the, the bolts of where the track would have went going down right here. I'm pretty sure this was the ending of it, too. <laughs> oh my, this is an abandoned dark ride show scene. car would have come down this way out of that uh, show scene the final one and then into here and this would have been the big finale or the the last uh, the last show scene of the ride pretty sure that that screen right there would like illuminate from a projector and then this would have went to load unload station which oh wow is pretty torn up that looks awful <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Yeah, so like within the wreckage here, you can see the, this is a pile of dark ride. <laughs> okay, so here's load unload. Yeah. Some mangled mess in here. Because the cars would have come through here and then moved along that way and then snake through and then come that way through uh, to the end. So this is all concrete here with carpet. And yeah, yeah, okay, so this is shuttle to the concert venue. Yeah, so this was uh, this was the load station right here. People would, uh, the cars would have come right here and would have loaded onto them. Yeah, uh, look at the lighting panels, the lighting units through here. Probably black light in there. Hard Rock Park, ladies and gentlemen. The original dark ride built for Hard Rock Park was called The Trip. It was actually an incredibly creative attraction based on the Moody Blues Knights in White Satin, and it was a genuinely interesting dark ride. It was built by Sally Dark Rides and was rated the third best dark ride in the world in 2008. 
However, when the park was sold, this attraction was likely deemed not family friendly enough. So when it was switched to Freestyle Music Park, they brought in iTech Entertainment to create something new. Monstars of Rock is what they came up with, obviously at an extremely low budget, and the end result was a pretty awful ride. This is the employees area probably, right? This is behind the uh... Oh yeah, Kiss in the Sky. Yeah, yeah, so this was uh... Oh, that's so cool! So all the employees signed this wall. Oh man. Oh look, and they had like caricatures of themselves. <laughs> right, faces of the faces of attractions. Oh my god. Look at these just fried vehicles. One's upside down. Look at that. Oh, there's a Wow. I like how they uh, they tied them together so they wouldn't flex. Just coming around the, that side was that long hallway that was backstage. And just coming around the corner, there's more of the mall that's stuck in its original state, untouched. So they just constructed this wall here. This was another main entrance for the mall. Look at this, the, the store is like completely intact here. Who knew we'd be exploring a mall? No way. Architectural plans, yes. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my God. Look at this. This is the facade of the mall for people who are looking uh, into the park, or from the park, I should say. And look at all the color samples for it. This is incredible. Oh, there's so many of them. There's like all these architectural plans and, and an original drawings right here. Oh my God. Oh, that's original art right there. This is original concept art. That's not a reprint. Oh my god. They have like uh, references to the architecture they're achieving, they're trying to achieve here. Oh my. There's construction photos. Look at this. Oh my god. This is literally just the entire history of this. This park, here's some uh, architectural drawings. Some of the spaces here. Oh, here's a concept of the guitar. I have never seen anything like this. This is the narrative. The Hard Rock Hotel, Myrtle Beach, 2003. This is literally a pitch this is a pitch for a Hard Rock Park hotel. Here is a Hard Rock Park timeline. This is so this is like a breakdown of all the work and then this shows the timeline of of uh, when it's being completed and such. I love like textile concept stuff like this. It is so cool. <laughs> oh my god. So this is the, you know what this probably was? This is a, another sketch of that concept art, but with uh, with new stuff over it. This was probably the MGM concept that they were trying to do, because it has the Pink Panther and Animation Station. Total project cost $88 million. So they were aiming pretty low. Oh, God. There's a whole, whole layout. This is the old park. This is what it was supposed to be with John's Theater and and everything. And then with MGM Studios Park written in with, with pen. 
feasibility studies. Oh yes, and here's the, yep. Oh, okay, so this is when master plan layout, including Mall 3. Uh, multi cinemas support studio tour and dark ride. So I guess this was still when uh, when MGM was was part of it. There is just everything in here. I, it's a Hard Rock Park uh, uh, things there. There is so much Ex executive travel. Don Pinkowski, look at that! Wow. You know, even for John being uh being the CEO of his own entertainment company, still flying in economy class. That's uh that's good on him. I could spend so much time in here. This is so cool. But uh let's see what else this park has. This looks like it was burned. This looks like hot fire. I think it did. Look at the wood. That was that was fire. So someone burned this part. Oh yeah, oh god. Huh. Even before their spring 2008 opening, the team at Hard Rock Park had already begun preparing for their largest expansion, what would have been called Paradise City. This would have completely redeveloped the other portion of the struggling Wakama Mall across the street. Paradise City was going to be the shopping and entertainment district that accompanied Hard Rock Park, made up of hotels, timeshares, attractions, and shopping. It would have been like City Walk to Universal Studios, a place they even take a jab at in their brochure. This plan ultimately fell through, however, when the company declared bankruptcy. Oh god. You have the Is that on Kodak paper? Photos oh of my god. the contract signing from IAPA 2006. Huh. For example, the band Sister Hazel. Okay. This is the commitment form. So it has all their emails between them and the band. Oh my god. And then the band for Preview Center Opening. So they played the Preview Center Opening. Oh, okay. And it has their deposit, and it has the final balance of what they would be paying. What was, what was their final balance? $100,000. $100, so that's not the only artist that we have. One yeah, Republic. That one. Yeah. So that's a very much a sign of the times. Uh -huh. The boys only took home $50,000. Oh, $50,000. Sister Hazel still beating them out. Yeah, Sister Hazel won that contest. And if you see the project, type of contract, yeah, project number two, zero 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 one. So that's wow. the very first, uh, wow, very first concert they must have had, actually. Yeah. So basically, this is what they get when they do the performance, and then they get chapstick, they get <laughs> some Purell, they get sharpies, <laughs> some packs of Orbit. Uh, what? Yeah. That is fascinating. Box of Special K cereal bars? I'm kind of jealous about that. That's it fascinating. I'm, like... I've never seen a, uh, a concert contract before. Yeah. Look at this whiteboard, too. It's, they literally have like a, a, a diagram of the, uh, the stage here. Now they're planning on putting security, ops people. Yeah. Boost zone. I wonder what that means. Buena Vista Music Group. They own Bohemian Rhapsody? I guess they do. In 2007, they did. Master use license. So this was the license they used for their water, sh their uh, nighttime spectacular. Yeah. Their fireworks show. Wow. I Let wonder if there's see. a price in there. Um, this is the master use license agreement. Yeah, okay. So... That'll that'll go through a lot of crap. So the, uh, the license to use Bohemian Rhapsody... And a fireworks show at a major theme park is $60,000, deemed by the Walt Disney Company. Buena Vista Music, I think. Obviously one of the icons of the Hard Rock Park. Oh, Gibson. Oh, my Gibson. God. So, let's get, let's get looking at this Gibson oh, agreement. wow. Gibson, right off the bat, guaranteed $1 million oh. for the guitar icon building. Wow. 
And this is what I'm really into is the sponsor benefits. Mm -hmm. So their benefits included 200 free Hard Rock Park tickets per year, 250 tickets available at 50 per, or VIP. Oh no, just standard tickets available for fifty huh. percent off. Ten VIP executive backstage passes per year. Discounts on merchandise, signage in Piccadilly Circus, Guitar Plaza designed to be Gibson Guitar, logo inclusion on all collateral, in-park point-of-scale collateral, right to conduct samplings and consumer research, ancillary Gibson merchandise available in park, free filming rights. That's crazy. They're guaranteed four directional signs. Park-wide <laughs> announcement of Gibson sponsor oh, major nice. show before and after each show. We would like to thank our friends at Gibson Guitars. Now enjoy your evening at Hard Rock Park. Gibson name appears on headstock down the frets on the body of the 78-foot guitar <laughs> in the center of the park. Gibson name and neon illuminated on guitar after show ends for up to 30 minutes. Gibson Guitar Plaza and All Access Entry Plaza is 248 feet long and incorporates <laughs> a Gibson Vegas high roller guitar design and ground. <laughs> Gibson Artist Birthday Celebrations in the Park. <laughs> Gibson Weekend Events. Gibson Contests and Sweeps. Oh my god. This is crazy. Uh, I like this is this is stuff that is never seen by normal guests. And it's just sitting in a in a abandoned mall store. This is a former store in an abandoned mall, and we have this information on the licensing agreement with you know all of these incredible bands and corporations. That's the thing that really blows my mind about it is that it's yeah, Eagles is one of the biggest like yeah. rock groups, like yeah. classic rock bands, and this stuff's just sitting here. Wait, so oh my god, there th this is the entire catalog of architectural plans. This is all of them in full length. This is everything. You could build Hard Rock Park right now if you if you just wanted to again. We, they have all of the intellectual property right here. This is unbelievable. I've been saying that so much in this, but it's like everything is so unprecedented in how much is left behind. Th this has never happened before in American theme park history. This is that show, the acrobatic show, the stunt show. And then this is the water park area for the kids. Uh, yeah, trees, these are lights. All, these are all the lights uh, on the parking lot. While we could have stayed another four hours inside this mall, sifting through the seemingly never-ending filing cabinets, we wanted to see the actual park, or at least what was left of it. I've actually already covered the general history of the park rather extensively in my abandoned episode on it, so if you're interested in learning more about the short-lived history of the park, I implore you to check that video out. That was the, uh... Great Meals Diner, the Eat Me Diner, and I believe it was right here. This is what's left of it, at least. Yes, okay. Disney's got Rock and Roller Coaster in a movie park, um, and uh, we've got Rock and Roll throughout, so we're kind of like Rock and Roller Coaster on steroids here. Oh, it's a nice terrace up here. So this is the VIP lounge? The VIP lounge. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. God. Is that a lobster tail? Yeah. Check this out. It tastes great. Oh my god. You just imagine a busy park, tons of people coming down the, the primary concourse. And uh, a big guitar right on pedestal right there. Or even at night with the Bohemian Rhapsody nighttime show, you know? Like the fountain behind us, the guitar fountain with the strings popping up and stuff like that. There's tons of stuff around the park that shows you stuff like that. So this is the, obviously the guitar in the, embedded into the, the concrete here that sort of, uh, comes about halfway down.
down the concourse, but you can see the uh, the neck of the guitar coming and then going straight through the the entrance of the uh, the primary gift shop. An incredibly cool piece of attention to detail. That is an expansive parking lot. This whole building is burned down. This building is gone. It is shocking to see how far this has fallen. Yeah, the ticket prices are are all out. This was the, uh, the coffee shop here, which is uh, <laughs> seen better days. There's no saving this. It's, this is done. This is it. Hard Rock Park opened for seven months, and this is what it's turned into now. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe this. Established 2008. Look at the roof, it's completely gone. How does that even happen? But you can kind of get a scale of the enormity here. You know, this is a massive store. It's hard to believe that this amount of water damage is possible. It's stripping, it's just wide open. It's all lined with, uh, with sheetrock, so. And expansive, this thing is huge. Look at the black mold on this. All bowing and the roof is completely torn up. These huge armoires with uh, merchandise on them, completely topped over. So this was the uh, adrenaline rush, the acrobatic type stunt show. Yeah, it's all still here. The pool's still here. After spending over seven hours inside the park, we finally decided to leave. Hard Rock Park is now nothing more than a barren landscape of something that was much greater. All rides to some degree have been removed and only context clues from the footings of the supports and the foundations of the load buildings would allow us to identify them. Walking around Hard Rock Park armed with a guest map trying to figure out where things were was a surreal feeling. Like we were trapped in an alternate dimension where the pristine park depicted on the map existed somewhere else. To me, a massive theme park fan, I couldn't help but obsess over the small details, the fine craftsmanship in the buildings, and the landscaping, another aspect I was forced to use my imagination on. 
it's truly a surreal feeling walking around what is the culmination of $400 million, thousands of hours of construction, and countless more in designing. These pathways, these bars and cafes, the brick in the buildings, and even the two dark rides had only been used for less than a year by guests. They were brand new, and that thought wasn't lost on any of us. I want to thank the guys from White Lake Productions for joining me on this strenuous adventure, and I think we all, more than ever, wish we could have gone to Hard Rock Park when it was open. It became even more obvious that this park had so much life ahead of it, but unfortunately, we'll never get to see it. Thanks for watching. We were dancing in the middle We could hardly hold our heads up I think we'd had too much to drink I remember wondering what they think da, 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 da. No fortune pays for wounds like these Just say you will, we can call it a day, sun is though we ain't sin.